Well, I've got a frosty little project for us all to get into. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Now, some of you may remember in the autumn I was trying to have a look at dyeing papers using berries, using fruit and uh, blueberries, blackberries, that sort of thing. These were frozen fruits that I reduced down on a heat, just some water, and I used the liquid to colour my sheet. So you can see here we've got all sorts of different textures and interests. I've got different papers here, some got scrunched up and caught up at the bottom of the pile whereas others have been okay and some have got tears in them none of that's a problem because we just use those as challenges to craft round later and that gives us some inspiration so don't ever worry if you've got a little tear in a piece of paper just carry on chances are we would end up cutting those sort of things down anyway and and that again we, we just either won't use that or we'll build it up with something else. So that's a nice one. That was the colour I was aiming for, but it just didn't work out. So it doesn't matter because what I have got is, is lovely and I'm really, really pleased with this colour because this is only going to aid me in doing a winter journey. But just to get us into the mood, for those that are just joining in, if you're a new subscriber here and you're not sure what junk journaling is, I've got a little project for you, something that you can learn from and take away and it might inspire you. When I first started junk journaling, this is what inspired me. Making journals out of packaging. Well, some of you will have seen this before and others no. I think that that's a really interesting shape for a journal. If you look, that would be your spine of your journal and you can use these as mini journals. So you would use those as template shapes. Uh, the one I was intrigued by was a tissue box because we started looking at this shape um, in one of the ephemera makes in the Marion North journal where I turned this into a Victorian frame. So this is the Marion North Journal, still going, um, and here is a tissue box front, but just made to look like a frame with the glass, which was for cellophane, housing postcards at the back there like a belly band or a side tuck, it's something that you could add, making it look like a field note style specimen card with the labels and things that you can get hold of. So with the inspiration to start a journal, the possibility of using some junk such as this tissue box, I was then looking at Klee Black Creations Etsy shop. I'm on her design team and I want to make a project. Now I have got carte blanche to go and have a look in her shop and make anything I want. I just have to choose what I want and tell her. So that's what I did. I had a good look and I've chosen this. Oh my goodness. It is stunning. It has ledger paper in the background and beautiful writing and then this stunning baby, well, blues, aqua blues, baby blues, frosty blues, ice blues, aqua. Just look at this. I mean, it's got beautiful grey tones, it's got splats, it's got white, it's just got a warmth to it because we've got rose hips and teasels and blueberry sprigs and oh I just can't tell you how delicate and beautiful that is. So in real life printed off, it's soft, it's great, I've printed it on, an, on a nice 80 GSM paper, nothing too thick but just stunning. And then there, I think there are six pages of it, so that's, that's the first one. Then look at this with the beautiful greens coming in and still the ledger paper in the background. I'm, I'm so inspired by this. I just think this is going to work perfectly with these blue papers that I keep getting when I'm dyeing things. And I, I love it. I just think that there's a cotton plant there and thistles and lilacs. Um, and then this one, eucalyptus. 
leaves, rose hips, cottons, this fabulous bloom of ink and oh, it's just, it's inspiration, it's lovely. I just think that that is just romantic and cosy and gorgeous and botanical and everything that I love, stylized in such a way that it really does sum up a frosty morning that maybe catches the garden unawares where one minute is all bursting with life and the second there's a flurry of snow and an unexpected frost and I think that that just conjures this up and here we've got the... Oh, it's just... It actually is speaking to me right now. It's really positive at a time in January where sometimes it's it can not be positive but this, how can you not drink this in and feel inspired in January. This makes me feel positive about January and some of the, maybe the office work that I have to embark on shortly. And yet there's something really, really uplifting about a frosty winter's day. Isn't this just beautiful in anybody's country, in anybody's time frame? Whether you're sitting in the burning heat, you might still be thinking that's absolutely lovely and coming up with some ideas for later on in this in the year so here we go I think this is the last one um, or maybe not there are six and then this beautiful cotton there it just oh no and I'm not oh they're, they're just stunning so there we go there's six pages and I just think that's great so I'm planning on three signatures and then being able to use some of the pages as well it's just down to picking which ones are going to go where but I don't think I'm quite there yet I want to get my journal cover sorted and then I've double printed them so on the back of these I've also got these beautiful ledger pages that she has which are plain uh, well they're not plain they're anything but plain but they haven't got any imagery on them apart from the splats and the color tones and the different ink effects so these are beautiful ink effects pages on top of pe um, office papers, ruled papers, college papers, ledger papers and graph paper and I just think that's great and it all works and the colours match even though it's a separate kit it, it works. It's a nice kit to have to print on the reverse of something else because it just seems to go with everything and she works within these colour palettes where it all seems to seamlessly tie together so there's really very little thought that has to go on. So those are my pages front and back so they're going to look beautiful in the journal when I turn them over. So I thought I'd just get stuck into a bit of a project, a little bit of a palette cleanser, if you will, um, after the Marion North journal. Just a, just a little day's break from that, just to bring in some other ideas and feel like I've in, I'm acknowledging a bright, shiny new year with a new journal. Uh, just something that I, I wanted to get out of my system. So with the packaging, you, you're going to have to prise it open like that. Try not to rip it, try to keep it intact. Those bits are always useful for other things on the journal. And then you just want to find how to pull it apart here. So I'm just running my finger along there. You could use a bone folder. We just need to remove all the panels that we don't need. And that's going to be the side panel so that one can come away. So I'm coming inside the groove there, you can see that. So we just remove those bits. But that card is good to hang on to, not permanently, <laughs> but just for this project. It's always quite nice to use other things from the project. Uh, so if you want to do buttons or stronger, thicker card embellishments, just keep the card that you're taking off to one side for now. You never know when you want a matching thickness of card. And then at the end you can throw it away. Don't keep hoarding stuff because it will just amass. And you won't remember what it was all about. And you're always going to have a packaging box. Alright, so we'll 
we'll hang on to those little bits for the moment. So that's a one and three quarter inch spine, which is four and a half centimeters. Now that's going to be a problem because it's too thin to be a journal cover. So we're going to have to reinforce this panel, but keep this as a design feature. Okay, then I've got this piece, which came from packaging. Again, this came from clothing. It was just keeping a shirt straight in a packet and it's almost perfect but not quite but it's I think that's thick enough to help me reinforce the front and the back but I shall not need the spine because I've got this so I can reinforce it with the other side of that panel I'm just going to cut away a little bit so that I get rid of the rounded edge there because I we're dealing with straight edges here. And I'm just using the box as my template guide here. I've now got a panel to reinforce. I've actually got this, so I've got a reinforcement piece there. So that's come off of the other side of the box, which was here. And then I've cut these out of that other packaging that I had, which was from an old shirt packaging and now everything fits in there nice and neatly all right i've just used an art glitter glue put some glue down and then we are going to lay down this card inside the bend the the groove bend there the crease mark that's being created and just make sure this grabs really quickly so i'll just make sure that it is meeting up any overhang is fine because I want to be able to cut that off. I'm just using a dry kitchen towel tissue here just to wipe away any glue that wants to seep out. And if I turn it around now, I can see that I've got a little bit extra, which is fine. I can trim that away when it has set. So this is just double thickness of what we've already got. So this could be some other cereal packaging. Um, it is a matching thickness, really. We're just ending up doubling it up. So that's how that's going to be. But I've just got to now work out what I'm doing for this front cover. Right, I'm just cutting away the inside a little bit better because there were some perforation marks and I think it would be nicer with a clean edge so I'm just using the knife to cut away those sort of teeth marks that just takes anything away that suggests that it was a tissue box because it's a nice clean edge or it will be when we're finished okay so just a recap we've put we've stuck one card down we've left this we've cut the inside out and smoothed it off that's fine but now when I was cutting this out I'm thinking I might like to put another card there cut this out so that there's a step a nice depth of uh, thickness there and then on top of that I would put that I don't want it to not match up too much with the back but a little thicker would be fine so I've cut it to match and I'm sticking that down and I'm hoping that yes I will now be able to cut that away so I don't have that hole there we go that's a little bit more strength appearing now and then this will be and then this will come on. But don't worry about the raggedy look because that's going to all be covered anyway. So the guts, the basis of this now is looking like that. That will be the journal. Okay, now I'm gonna work on my inside panel just by sticking my image to the this final panel that's going to go behind the oval. So I just want to make sure that I glue this down and uh, it doesn't have to be too precise because this is going to get trapped in. It just wants a nice, a nice bead of glue. So use the bone folder to smooth that all out. And then that will eventually come in there. So then all I need to do now is decorate the outside of my 
journal cover then I'll be able to add this afterwards okay. and what I've done is I've cut away my card so I've separated it from the spine and then I have reinforced it with some tape so all I did was I lined it up on my mat I took my ruler once I I just cut them there and there had all three pieces I lined it up here with my ruler so it so it was all nice and straight left a little gap and just put some tape on it so now I've got a nice flexible cover this is the bare bones of the inside of the cover all waiting decoration now it will close it's not going to ping open and I've also I've reinforced the join if you like but it is only with a parcel tape and then what I need to do is strengthen it up over there. Now I've used parcel tape which is made of paper, I could use a plastic but I don't want to because I'm going to put a fabric cover on this I believe as my basis and then I'm going to decorate onto that. Okay, I've now put the panels on here and everything is strengthening it up. I've still got nice flexibility in my folds there, so we're looking like that. What I've lost at the moment is my circular bit, but no problem because this was double sided with uh, and it is 230 GSM, so it's uh, that double sided sort of card, sort of paper. Um, and just going to add, add to the strength of it but I'm leaving it there for the moment because I will now be able to cover it with my fabric when I get this ironed. Uh, you now can't see through it as much so that's fine and I just didn't want to be able at any point to see any marketing um, and to understand that that was originally a tissue box. I've left enough allowance around here to be able to fold over so we've got that as well so I can trim that down as I need. When I've got my fabric glued on I will be able to one final time cut this out leaving an allowance and then I will snip around and fold this around here and that will be how I'll tackle that so we'll we'll have the oval back in there and it will all slowly start to make sense as we go through. I've just reinforced this with um, the tape as well so now I'm just pressing that through and we are now definitely nice and secure and looking good. So okay, that's... I've brought in the messy sheet because I've got the fabric, it's all ironed and I've backed it onto some heat and bond and when I did the ironing I'd forgotten that the ironing board the last time I used it I'd been using wax and ink uh, and brown and so I've now got this patterning here from, <laughs> from a past project which is I think it might be a bit waxy. I'm not disappointed uh, I was just surprised. I need to wash the cover of the ironing board clearly. Just wondering if that will now act as a wax resist. But I'm bringing in my paints just because I thought I'd get a little bit creative here. I've got watercolour paints and these are, it's a beautiful set and I haven't really used them. I bought them in lockdown thinking I was going to do a whole load of watercolour and I never did that. I ended up junk journaling so <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to wet the surface of my fabric. Okay I have got that good and wet. I'm hoping that the ink won't come up off of the here. doesn't matter if it does. Right let's roll this is a roll your sleeves up sort of a moment. I've got um, a watercolour pen here but I might prefer a thicker brush and I'm, I'm just I'm gonna just play really. I'm just gonna sit here with a cup of tea and add some blue. A bit of an effect here with this watercolour which I think is quite thick so I'll just add a drop of water in there and see if we can get this to disperse round a bit rather than sitting like a dark 
stain. I don't really want that on there, but it doesn't matter because I'm probably going to end up um, painting white paint over it tomorrow anyway. So I'm doing this late at night uh, with the idea that this is going to dry. And I'll just try and get that moved around rather than sitting there having a blob of colour. It's working quite well. It's quite nice, isn't it? So I've just got to be mindful of the colours that we were working with in, um, in Brigitte's beautiful digital kit. And there's a stronger blue in there, but then it's a subtle blue as well. So let's just think um, and try to not be too overpowering. And uh, maybe we want this colour blue here. Let's see what this one does. Oh, yeah, that's quite nice. Quite like that. Very strong. But of course, it always looks a bit strong and then it dies down a bit it, as it dries. And I'm getting some ink coming up off of the palette here, which that's fine. It's quite good. In fact, let's, let's even do that. Let's see if I can get some of the ink off of the sheet. It's all the same colour tone, isn't it? It's just black ink. Let's see if we can get some lift of colour off of this drop sheet from the Marion North Journal to transfer. Got a bit of gold going on there, so I might even get gold metallic coming in. Wow, oh, okay. That's, that's interesting. I might not need this. All right, let's see if I can get this to move around a bit more. That's very grungy all of a sudden. That's how to use waste paint. And we'll just stain the cloth like that as a background subtle grunge sheet, which it will be when it dries. But actually bringing in tones from here, ultimately. I don't know what this is. This is some sort of neon blue. Don't know what that is. Let's have a go at that. Um, it's quite nice, quite bright. How about the green, maybe... See if I can just get a bit of that going in there as well. And a bit of that up here. And oh, where's that green? I like over there. Oh, the other colour that uh, we've seemed to have got is a little bit of this. This is quite an uninspiring piece of paper that is going to ultimately end up in the journal. So I think we'll see if we can take a press of this ink effect we've got going on here. Oh. While we're at it, making a right mess. Making a right mess, okay. I'm going to leave that one to dry. Now oh, this is this paper bag that I quite like, so I'm just going to use this idea. See if I can get some colour transfer onto the paper bag. That's where we're using residual paint that we're not going to necessarily need. Oh look, and it mops it up. Oh, that's nice. That's a lovely effect. The ink 
patterning or the, the watercolour patterning. It'll only be subtle, but I might be able to add to that and embellish. And, and just, you know, that just looks interesting, doesn't it, straight away. And uh, all we've done is just use waste paint that was going to otherwise just evaporate. I will leave that one to dry as well over there. All right, we'll see where we're at in the morning. And then we can paint it white and freshen it up and make it look all arctic, but there's just a little bit of an undertone of grunge, grungy bluey green coming through, which is uh, going to be reflecting what's going on in the digital kit. Well, I come down this morning and I've been treated to this. It's dried overnight, it's, it's much paler, it's subtle and I love it. It's just got really nice depth and interesting colours. And I think it just is going to fit in beautifully with this design. So we've got white as a... We're working with white in this palette here. And I want to bring in some white. So I'm thinking that I had a stencil yesterday, uh, which is here. It's got some snowflakes on. And I might use the snowflake image as well. And I've also found this stencil also, which may may be nice to have some elements of that but as I bring in the rest of the images from this lovely Winter Whisper kit and if you are searching for it it is Winter Whisper not with an S on the end uh, you'll find that under Klee Blatt Creations uh, you can see that it is working very nicely with the colours and that moss green watercolour that I used. So these have been created with watercolour and that's why that's working really nicely. And then here's the other sheet that I ended up using to mop up yesterday. That is the reverse, that's what came off. So there's some interesting marks on there. And then here's the paper bag. Beautiful! So that's retained the colour really really nicely. And this is just from uh, a jewellery and accessory shop that uh, obviously is from London, but it's one of our high street shops. So we see this a lot in all major cities and towns. And um, it says here designed in Notting Hill, but I think I've redesigned it here in West Sussex. So, uh, yeah, they might want to have a word with themselves because uh, they're missing a trick. I think this is beautiful. I think this really looks rather good. So that in a journal, be that way, will become pockets, tucks, you know, that's lovely. It's got a lovely crunchy feel to it. It's nice to have an original paper bag and we'll sew that in and then that will just become part of an area for collage and this will be a nice interesting background, all working in the colour tone going on here. So I was really pleased. This is the back. But this is to be peeled off um, because this is heat and bond. So this is just a paper backing with a sticker sheet. Seems to be... That hasn't quite... There's an interesting portion of paper that I could use to make something else. I really, really love that. So if I, if I put that together and then sew it, that's a nice start of a tag, a junk tag. And that's quite nice to be able to use this paper because the shiny surface I wouldn't really want. But there's nothing to stop me sewing that together and then it being interesting ephemera. Okay, so now I can bring this in and we'll just get a glimpse of what could be. Okay, so my next step is to glue the fabric to the journal cover and I can see that I'm not going to be able to iron that and get a bond in there so I'm just going to put some glue, uh, this is Fabri-Tac here, I'm just going to put some in there now and then I'm going to work quickly and just iron on my fabric cloth. Okay, back from the ironing board and all nicely stuck down and able to be bent. We've got a little bit of a warp here and here but that's just because we've got these thinner pieces and all will come right in the end when we add the panel and then the extra thickness of the fabric being pulled round 
that's going to strengthen everything up and that will help it all lay straight so I'm not worried. The other thing I've got is where I cut this bit out. I can now look at this on the front and I'll be able to see what is going to be cut away and what areas I'm working I've with. I've got this recently so it's new to me is the Uncharted, Uncharted Marino. I'm just going to try this ink dauber dauber and see if we can get an interesting stenciled stippled effect then work out if I like it or oh, I do like that okay so that was a lot of fun um, and I've got an interesting border going up one side of it now I see that it's sort of working but I want to know where to position other things and sort of get some inspiration when I can see the oval reappearing so I'm going to cut that out now Okay, here we are. I've stuck everything down. We're missing a few there because they got caught in my knife. I got a bit heavy handed and they cut away. That's not a problem. That's just something I will now work with. And then on the front, this is how we're looking now with the oval back in. That's okay. It feels nice. It's nice, but that's all it is to me at the moment it's just nice whereas I want it to be oh wow and we're not there yet so I'm going to put this in so that we can see where we're heading and I've got to just line this up because I didn't have the fourth blueberry in my original design so it needs to come over a bit so that's going to be something similar to that then I've got this space down here which looks to me quite empty. We've got the interest here, so I think we'll have it like that. We've got the interest here of the blueberries and the flower and then it just starts to go pale. Then we've got this shot of colour coming in here which ties in reasonably well. And then what I want to do is perhaps have more texture to mimic this sort of thing because that to me looks like a similar texture I want to have this up here let's make a mixture using normal PVA school blue all right I'm going to add some water and then we want paint I'm just adding a little a little bit of gesso there come flowing out and then I'm adding in this is zinc white acrylic paint it doesn't matter what color it is as long as it's white and not the buff color but you know a real nice white okay so there's my runny glue and paint mixture and then some just just some tissue paper here the best thing to do is just put down my gluey mixture of paint and what I want to do is get the tissue paper absolutely coated in it all I don't want to get the ink moved around too much okay so just put that down and then let everything soak into this tissue paper and make sure that I start to bring this round particularly where I've got the gap that I wasn't happy with And the other thing I've got is some textured crackle paste. So let's just take a little bit with the idea of putting it down here. And just sort of a haphazard manner. Okay. 
over here we'll just have a bit more I'm applying the rest of the glue mixture over my patterning here. I want to stop the ink from being able to smudge in the future so I'm protecting it with the PVA that will be in the mixture here and I'm also, I mean it will diffuse out a little bit with the moisture so I'm going to put the heat gun on it to stop it doing it too much. Um, I'm just sealing everything in really and using up what's left and the white paint that's in there will mute down the blue which is going to be quite nice I'm hoping. I'm just pushing some grit paste through my stencil here just to see if I can create a gritty frosty raised impression just gently pulling that up and I don't think that that's going to show but I'll show try and bring that up. If I can keep it nice and still and steady these raised bits should dry and hopefully stay stay upright. So this is a distressed grit paste by Tim Holtz. It's translucent from Ranger. All okay. right just to bring you up to speed I have pulled in the edges I have tapered them in with a triangle cut so we've now got you know very arty very messy but totally good corners here and um, what I'm going to do is with my paper card this is the lovely print here I'm going to use this as my inside cover so I'm yet to stick that down and then when I've done that I want to put on some book corners so we will I'll just show you how I'm going to achieve that because I want to see if I can get them white or grey and this as well to go on the front cover all right I'm using a furniture paint I'm using rust-oleum a chalk paint okay my tweezers have gone missing so that's annoying so I'll just have to try and hold it but I just uh, with the brush just going round and doing a very thin coat all the way around and um, then I'll come back again and do a second coat when that's dry and the chalk paint will stick to the metal it will come off with knocks and scrapes over time but arguably that's going to be really quite fun and uh, and weathered in the future so I'll just leave that to dry and build up a few thin coats uh, I didn't have white unfortunately that had dried out in the garage so we've just got a pale grey colour here but I think it's going to all be in keeping with the journal it's going to look nice just naturally becomes a bit darker because you're putting it over a dark background so that's the only thing but I'll just keep building up and uh, I don't want to get my brush all clogged up so I'll just work quickly get that on there and then I'll do the same for here now chalk paint is very nice because it dries really quickly covers most surfaces without the need for a primer. It doesn't have much of a smell to it either chalk paint so I feel like we don't need to be too ventilated here. It's a good paint. It's not one of these um, high VOC paints that you know give you a he headache or anything. I've also just found the last of my grey blue lace so I should be very sorry to see the end of that but I do think it would love to come and live here and I'm just wondering if it would like to peep out down the bottom. They will glue the whole lot underneath the page and I'm thinking if I can angle this in I might be able to do something clever 
when I uh, come to uh, see about another side. So maybe let's just see what I've got for the top. Just make sure that is all even. We might be lucky enough. Oh gosh, I think that's perfect. I think this is meant to be. This was meant to come and live here. What I'm going to have a trouble with is when I put the corners on. But just to make sure that that's not going anywhere. And then... Right, that's all stuck down. So now I'm just going to glue on my book paper and then we will put the corners on. And that is going to look like that and have it all tucked in. And then we'll just, the corners, you'll, we'll tidy them up in a minute. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, guys, here is the cover all complete. I haven't got the signature in, so I'm just showing you how I've done this really interesting cover with the lovely crackle effect and shabby chic vintage star lace effect. beautiful watercolour image here from the winter whisper kit I've got some snowflake embellishment on the back there I'm not sure if I'm finished here I might put some more white on there but uh, this is where I'm leaving the project today I just want to show you that we've got one two three four so I've got four sheets left to play with and in here we've got um, so this is the start of what will be three signatures and that's how they're looking so far you know not thick enough but I've got some interesting paper folds going on here and uh, lots of pages to embellish and I'll be able to pull in these images throughout and work with this colour tone as well if I pull out my paints again and then start to add little elements of these sheets to create pockets and nice ephemera pieces and then what I think I'm going to do is also bring in another digital kit called Blue Winter and I've also got this Blue Winter add-on digital kit to play with as well. So I'm going to add some of the tags and the ephemera pieces here. Have some fun with these stamp ideas. I like that. And then there's some journaling cards to add to it as well. And I'm going to punch out circles from this kit because I just love it. And then there's some really nice frosty blue with some snowflake images there which will tie into everything that I've done on the front there's another one there I'm not sure if I printed everything off of that one but that was blue winter add-on so it's the blue winter kit but this is the add-on bit because I love the I love the tags that I can make and I think they'll all work really nicely on some of the dull pages that will just bring them to life and then I'll be able to add more scraps and embellishment lovely warm tones coming in there nice paper folds all just starting to emerge and uh, yeah I really really like the colour palette here so much it's absolutely exciting so uh, although we've got some dull pages going in here the paper folds are interesting and I can decorate them up accordingly so that I think is just quite fun for a little bit of winter embellishment here there as I see fit over the next couple of months, I shall just delve into this one. And uh, it's really, really sweet. And I'm going to use a white binding on the back here. And I'll probably carry on. I quite love this crackle glaze idea. So that's super. So there we go. All right, so that's taken quite a while to put together. I don't want to make the video any longer, but I hope you've really enjoyed that. Just a little, little change of pace and having a look at how to put together a journal cover and then the signatures we can look at next time and I'll just show you how I put that all together in a nice little flip through and then I shall work on this one. But I'm really pleased and I can put pockets if I want to but it 
you know, from a tissue box, guys, really. Look at that. And some cotton fabric from a bed sheet, one that uh, we never even used, is just, um, you know, it's how to, how to make your scraps work for you, isn't it? So there we go. Um, I've had a lot of fun putting that together and I hope to be back soon with the Marion North stories and also I'll show you how I complete this yeah. one. And if you found value here, do please subscribe to the channel and above everything else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm.